chapter through, through verses 32 through 37 this morning. And this is all about watching. And um, I say, how many of you realize that soon and very soon He's coming? Amen. How many of you know that we're on the threshold of any moment now that eastern sky could break open? And it could be the trumpet sound. And those who are in Christ will leave this place. That's what the Scripture says. How many of you know that, listen, even though you've heard this all your life, it's still true. And we're closer now than we've ever been. And so today, if you have your Bibles, this, that's just kind of a little prelude into, into what this is about. But let's look at verses 32 through 37. Mark chapter 13. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his word and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cockroach, or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Let's pray. Father, we just go ahead and thank you for this morning. Lord, we just thank you for your goodness, all your mercy. Lord, we just thank you this morning for the sweetness of your spirit that's in this house today. Truly, Lord, there is a sweet spirit in here today. Lord, we just thank you for your presence. We, we just honor and we worship you. We thank you, Lord, for this country that, Lord, you envisioned men and women to come in so that even this day we could come out to your house and freely worship you in spirit and truth. Father, it's you. It's you who began a good work many years ago, and it's you who continues in your servants and those that love you. Father, we pray over people that's come in here today that, Lord, whether they've come in with heartache or they've come in with, with, with a physical Ill illness, Lord, maybe it's in their mind. Maybe they've got emotional afflictions. Lord, we just pray today, Lord, let freedom reign in your house today. Lord, set your people free. Because what I know, that's why you paid a price on Calvary. So that truly we could be free indeed. Father, I ask for that same anointing. Lord, to hit this house this morning. Lord, I want to, I want to be shaken. I want us to be stirred up. But most importantly, I want what you want. I want your people to hunger and thirst for you even more this day. So Lord, by faith, thank you for already being here. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you, Lord. Because this is your time. And this is really about what you want. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I like this. Uh, many times people have, uh, and I've heard many messages preaching about when Jesus is coming. I've heard many messages about people trying to examine Scripture and find the hour, find the time, find the day. And Jesus makes it clear there's no man's going to know. So I can tell you, if you think you've got a hunch, if you think you've got a hint, you're wrong. I love you. Hey, even sometimes I think that, that hey, did you see that going on? I just, you hear the news report. Oh, this is happening over there. This is happening there. Oh, this is it. This is the last final moment. But we don't know. Only the Father knows. And I love this. Because number one, Jesus tells, first of all, let me tell you the setting. They're sitting on the Mount of Olives. This is in the last week uh, before Jesus will go to the cross. And he's got his disciples set aside and he's talking to them intimately and he leaves the end of this. I love this because he says it's not just for you, it's for everyone. 
This is for everyone to know. But the, but the setting is so intimate and he's talking to them and he's one-on-one -on -one conversing and he's trying to show really who he is, what this is all about, and what really is to come. And he says, I don't even know what's going to happen, but my Father does. And I tell you, that's amazing because Jesus is God. If you know John chapter 1, you find with the understanding that, that Jesus is the Word that made flesh and He is with God and He is God. And you have to realize something. So here He is as God. And many have said, well, how did Jesus as God not know what was going to happen? And what did happen? The amazing thing is about Jesus is He humbled Himself. He humbled Himself to His Father. That the things that the Father had sealed up, He didn't nose into. Well, that could preach this morning. It really could, but that's not the message. Because I realize, listen, the whole theme of what Jesus is trying to tell His people is that, listen, I'm coming. It's not a matter of when. It's a matter of definite. That I'm coming no matter what. And when we realize this, listen, some people, they get in a, in a hurry when you hear the, what's going on over in the Middle Eastern countries. And you get in a hurry when you hear different tales of different things. But it's, it's, that Jesus is saying, listen, these things are going to happen. But your duty is to watch. Your duty is to be ready. Your duty is to be on guard. Your duty is to be fulfilling what you're called to do. It's not a time to slack off. It's not a time to sit back. It's a time to realize that He's coming. And He's coming for those that are watching and are ready for His arrival. Amen. Now listen. I know, listen. Many times we have school days theology. Now let me explain that. Because in school day theology, the teacher gives an assignment. And she gives a due date. And I don't know about you, but I've been guilty on many occasions. That if she said it was due on Friday, I waited till Thursday to get her done. Amen? Amen. Now don't y'all all sit there because we've all done it. You know that? How about this? Mama left the house with a list of things to do. And all of a sudden you know what time she's coming back. So you play a little. Oh, you rummage through the cabinets a little. Come on, kids. You know what you you know what I'm talking about. And you look having to look at the clock on the stove and you say, Oh no, I've only got thirty minutes before mama gets home. And you know what you do. You get in a frenzy and you get her done before she gets home and you get in trouble. That's that's school day theology. And come on now, grown ups. For a lot of us, it's been that way with other things too. We know that, hey, we've got this to do. Come on now. I guarantee you nobody wants to go to the doctor between Christmas and New Year. You know why? Listen, I'm going to tell you why. Because you know what he's going to say. And many times you want to schedule it over there around March. Hey, I'm telling on myself here. You want to schedule around March, April, or May. You know why? Because that way you've got a couple months there that you can get rid of some of this stuff you've been enduring and packing on during the times when you shouldn't have. So you wait. And it's a last minute idea to, hey, whoa, I've got to get this taken care of. You know what's the amazing thing is? is hey, I joined the, year, the, the gym a couple years ago. And you know what's the amazing thing? Listen, you know when I joined? Around Thanksgiving time. I did. I did because I knew, hey, there's no need to put it off. There's no need to procrastinate. I need it now. You know, now most people, are listening, if we're going to go on vacation, now listen, between usually May and June before the July or August trip, it's, hey, it's crunch time. Oh, yes, I'm going I'm to lose 15 pounds. I'm going to finish something I ain't fit in in two years, but it's going to work. And I put it into priority and I get her done because my thought process is I have to get it done before the time is coming. I want to tell you something about Jesus. He doesn't put the time on when He's going to come. And there's a reason. You see, if we're going to act about our spiritual life as we do the things in our physical life, the truth of the matter is, we'll put it off until it's too late. You see, many times the biggest enemy, the biggest use of the enemy is procrastination. Put it off one more day longer. Why do you need to do it today? Come on, don't worry about that. Hey, 
Come on, you can read your Bible when you get home tonight. It's going to be a full day. And I know when you get home tonight, you're your best attention. But I've said this before. I might have said it last week or the week before. But usually we have good intentions. But when it comes down to the line and we put it off too long, hey, it's too late. Most of the time your eyes are too heavy. You're, you're just weak in, in heart and spirit. Jesus said, can't you pray for an hour? He said, your, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. So what we put off on timetables, listen, we've got to run. The enemy uses it for his kingdom's sake, not for the glory of Christ Jesus. Uh, the amazing thing is here, I'm going to tell you something. Do you know that you have a duty in God's house today? Do you know that? Because Jesus said it. Now listen to this, and don't y'all get mad at me, because I'm going to tell you, I love you, but no matter how young you are, or no matter how old you are, the Bible says, and you're right here, now listen to Jesus, he says, the man's on a faraway journey, he's left his house, gave authority to his servants, and to every, no what, and to just a couple of few, uh, his word. No, 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 every, come on people, listen, every person has a place in God's house. Every person has a place in God's kingdom. God has something designed for every single person. And it's designed for you to be able to do, listen, all the days of your life. I, I agree that, listen, there are seasons, there are times. Uh, this is like the seasons change and getting colder. In our lives, seasons change. And it seems like sometimes God will change us from here to there. But He's got a purpose. He's got a plan. And all the days of your life, He wants you to be eager about serving Him and doing His will in His kingdom. There's no time to give up. There's no time to waste. Realistically, He says, He says, hey, listen, now where's Gregory at? Gregory, I love you, brother. But when I was doing a word study, a study on this one word named watch, that comes from the root word where we get our common uh, names today, Greg or Gregory. So Gregory, that name means to be a watcher, to be one who is watching in anticipation, preparing and ready for what is to come. So Gregory, I'm not picking on you this morning, but that's what your name means. It means to be watching, ready, preparing yourself for what's coming. And I'm going to tell you, this is no time to fall asleep, people. This is no time to sit back. Come on, I like my recliner too. It kicks back at a certain level and it makes you want to sleep. But we're not supposed to be doing that spiritually. We're supposed to be erect. We're supposed to be standing up. We're supposed to be ready, anticipating. Do you know what? Hey, listen. If, listen, they mentioned the, the word snow for Wednesday. Did y'all hear that? Have y'all heard that? Oh, I see it back there. There's anticipation. There's waiting on it. Yes. Hey, and there's some of Listen, some people. They, listen, listen, here's their plot. All right. Tomorrow. I gotta get my food line. I, I gotta get by the food line and I gotta get the bread and the meal before everybody else gets it. Oh, I gotta oh I'm going through town. I gotta stop by the bylaw with the hair seat. I got to be prepared. I got to get ready. And listen, I'm gonna tell you something. If we get that same attitude about the Lord Jesus Christ, oh if we be anticipating, if we be eager, if we be expected for him to show up and come, we do things a whole lot different, my friend. We'd be a totally different person. Matter of fact, you see, you go through the grocery store. Y'all ever been there on day they announce no? Have you seen what happens? People have such an expectation. And you know what? You let them say, oh, it ain't going to affect us much. I'm, that's what we go by the most. Because they do not know what they're talking about. I promise you. Let me tell you, listen, they're 50% right and they're 50% wrong. They got a 50 50 chance of getting something right or somewhere out there. But I'm going to tell you who's right all the time. I'm going to tell you who's right 100% of the time. He knows the forecast. He knows when it's going to shine. He knows when it's going to rain. And guess what? He knows exactly what he wants to do in your life this day also. Amen. So this is an amazing report here because he's telling people it's coming whether you know it or not. It's coming in a time that no man's going to know. Listen, that tells me for the believer in Jesus Christ today, we have something that we need to be about. We need to wake up and realize He wants to use us. He has a place in His kingdom for every single person to do his work. Now wait a minute. I know the excuses. I just can't do that. I can't do it. You don't know what it's like. Oh no. I can't. 
You know, I make a dramatic remarks. You know why? Because I've been there. I've sounded like that before. Why are you asking me to do that, preacher? You know, I can't do that one. I'll do anything but that one. I've been there. I've done that. But here's the key. Listen to this. He said, you've got a work to do in my house. But listen to this. He said, he said, who left his house and gave authority to his servants. That word authority means I have empowered you to do my work. I'm tired of hearing people say I can't when I know Jesus can. I'm tired of hearing people say why they won't when I know how he wants to. I'm tired of hearing all the excuses because the Bible tells me that he will empower you with his authority to do what he wants to be done. You see, we've got to quit giving excuses of why we can't. We've got to quit giving excuses about, well, it's coming. Or we don't know what this is going to be. We've got to quit giving every kind of excuse and start standing on the rock of Jesus Christ. He takes away every excuse. He takes away every, I can't. He puts in, I am, instead of I can't. Oh, I don't know about you, but when Moses stood before that burning bush, he said, I can't. Who am I going to tell him who, who, who talked to me? And the I am that I am talked to him. Jesus can if we want him to. The amazing thing is, he, said, he can't even if you don't want him to, but he's given you a choice. And you choose every single day. And the sad thing is, is the way we choose ex expresses how we truly believe. The amazing thing is, is in, in Genesis about chapter 6, you read about a man that God said, it's going to rain. The amazing thing is, is it's never rained before. And as, as, as you take that into context of where we sit in history, hey, we've never seen people defy gravity without machines. But it doesn't mean it ain't going to happen. And this one man named Noah, God gave him instruction. And he paid close attention to the instruction. When he got the instruction, he obeyed it to the team. And the first thing he says, it's going to rain. He said the people become so wicked and defiled, there's no good upon them. And he said that he would have to destroy them. And he would do it with water. And it was going to rain. Now listen, there's some things in, in Genesis that's not there, but we've got to take into calculation. Because if God tells you something He wants you to do, and something that's coming, He's going to make every necessity or need along the way, He's going to fulfill it, and He's going to provide for you. It didn't show us. It says, it will be made out of gopher wood. Let me ask you a question. Where did He get all the gopher wood? I'll tell you where He got it from. God gave it to Him. Either God gave it to him in one way or another, he allowed him for it to be in front of him so that he could choose to take it and use it for God's glory. It said that it would be put together, and when it's put together, it said that it would be uh, coated with a tar-like substance. Well, where did he get the stuff, the tar-like substance? Well, God gave it to him. God made a way so he would be provided to be given, but he chose in the opportunities of where to get those things and how to obey God. Every bit of his life was a choice. And I'm telling you today, the first part we start with a choice is with the Lord Jesus. Christ. When we choose Him, everything else has got to go aside. And when we choose Him, we've got to begin to obey everything that He tells us all along the way. There is no other way. We have to be obedient. So He tells Him, hey, you're going to get this wood. Well, how'd He get it? I don't know how He got it. Hey, He's told you to do something. You don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. But He's going to do it for you. He's going to give you an opportunity and show you a way that will work and He will work it out for His glory's sake. Amen. So we have to realize, listen, there's a lot of details that's not in Scripture, but this guy is obedient, and he's watching for the rain. He's working towards that day. But along the way, he's a preacher. The Bible tells me that he's a preacher of the Gospel. He was telling people day in and day out the good news of who God is and the bad news of what was to come. And people chose not to believe Him. But this guy is amazing. Because many of us today, our life is expectancy is somewhere around the mid-80s or early 80s. But in that day and time, listen, it was a lot longer. And this man, for 120 years, he preached the gospel, he told the truth, and he continued the work without stopping. He never slowed down. Listen, the amazing thing, listen, here he is. Can you imagine this? Come on, some of you carpenters. You ever swung a hammer before? Can you imagine this? 
I don't know what kind of hammer they had. I, I really don't. I don't know how it all worked. But here's what I know. I'm sure it was big, oblong, and I'm sure it was swung. And I guarantee you, listen, every once in a while, if he wasn't paying attention, he would mess up. But I believe, listen, God gave him so much grace is that he worked, he was able to tell. As he worked, he was able to tell. Some people think, hey, the only place you're supposed to tell is in church. No! That's why, listen, where you are, where you work is a ministry where you can tell others about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are. It's not just in the church house. It's in all the houses. I love that. Hey, I didn't get to watch Billy Graham on his uh, My Hope, but I'm going to tell you this. The example is to get it in the house. You know what? When we get Jesus in the house, and things will change. It'll change this place. It'll change America. But we've got to realize something. We're supposed to be useful wherever we are. Now, now listen. This guy, for 120 years, I'm still talking about Noah, by the way. This guy, for 120 years, hey, he's diligently doing what God's told him. He's diligently going. He doesn't know when the rains will come. He doesn't know when it's going to happen. But he just follows the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. When we'll quit, get it up and get our, we'll quit trying to get our eyes on the definites of, who oh, is it today? Oh, is it next week? Oh, is it 19 whatever? Oh, is it 2000 this? By the way, can I tell you, in 19, in the 80s, he was supposed to come a couple times. In the 90s, he's supposed to come a couple times. Just a couple years ago, he was supposed to meet him somewhere out there in Arizona. I don't know how that worked out. But you know what? He still ain't come yet. So that tells me there's still time to be about what he's called us to do. It's not a time to stop. It's not a time to slow down. It's a time to pick it up, dust it off, and get on down the road with him. Because he wants to do something special through your life. This is the part we miss. It's not about you or me. It's about Him. You know, He tells all this. He says, He's the Master. He's going away. He's got servants. Hey, you know, hey, I did my studies on this. And do you know, actually, do you know who the porter is? Porter is the, is the pastors today. The porters are the one that's supposed to be watching out for the sheep, telling them to keep going and keep getting ready. Oh, I tell you, old Matthew Henry, man, he breaks it down in I O N A. That's the way God designed it, though. He designed it so, hey, that people that were that God had raised up in the church and put in positions that they would be telling people what to do that would glorify God. And I'm gonna tell you, that's the only reason I'm here. Whether you know it or not, the only reason I'm here is to try to give you what He's told me to give you, so that it would give Him glory. So that, hey, you might gain something out of His Word by His Spirit so that it might help you along the way in your travel so that you can be all that you can be for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what this is all about. It's not a big me or a big I. It's about a big Him who hang on the cross one day, got down off of it, went in a grave, rose out of it, and sits in glory today. That's all it's about. We have got to get, listen, we've got to quit trying to focus on is it going to happen today? Is it going to happen tomorrow? And we just need to be diligent as though we're working as though it can happen today. But we are, hey, we are pressing on for the glory of God if it doesn't come today. You know, my prayer is that we'll see the rapture. It is. Every generation's prayer has been that they would see the rapture. Do you know that who he's talking to was praying they'd see the rapture? But I t there's a reason why God hasn't stopped it yet. There's a reason why he hasn't poured, poured out his fury yet. When Jesus came, listen, it had amounted enough. When, when In the days of Noah, sin had amounted enough that God had to do something. It was, in the days of Jesus, it says that things were fulfilled and that everything was taken care of. And it got to a point where Jesus had to come to make the way. And listen, it's filling up fast. It's getting to a place, listen, where, where sin is abounding faster and faster. He said in these days we'll see, we'll see evil like we've never seen before since the creation of the world. So what we have to realize, we haven't seen how bad it's going to get yet. We've never, humanity's never seen it yet. But our job is not to be worried about that. It's to be focused on what we're supposed to be doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. I love the fact He gave us authority. I love the fact He gave us work to do. The next thing is, it's so powerful. It's because He gives different time frames of which you can do. 
And he says out of all these, not to be hindered or focused on. He says that our number one duty is to watch. Our number one duty, Gregory, is from that, that original Greek word, Gregor, Gregoria, or Gregoria, something like that. I can't pronounce it right. I'm not Greek. But it's to watch. It's to be prepared. Can I tell you, I don't know who, whose day today could be their last day. I don't. I don't know in this world whose day this will be for their last day. None of us do. But God does. But if we live each day like it could be the last, I believe, listen, things would totally change in our life. There are people that wish they could have six more months just to continue on. There are people that are laying in a hospital bed this morning that wish they could just have two normal days outside living like most of us live. We've got to get to a point that we realize by grace, by mercy, you're here today. By mercy, you have not left here. By mercy, listen, you have an opportunity to serve Him today. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not one of those, I've got to do this. You know, I said before, when we've got those lists, we wait. To, it's not, a, I've got to do it. We've got to get to the place where I want to do it. You see, if you don't want to do something, it doesn't matter if you do it or not. You know what's the truth? If you came in here today and you don't really want to be here today, you're going to get nothing out of today. If you listen, if you go home and you don't want to be at home, everybody around you is going to know you don't want to be there and nothing good is going to happen while you're there. You come in, you sing songs, but if your heart's not wanting to serve Him and worship Him, it means nothing to Him. You can give, listen, you can be the richest person around here and you can give all your money to God, but if it's done without the right heart, it means nothing. We've got to want. We've got to, have, we've got to really want it so bad we will it to happen in our life. Jesus said, watch. Jesus said, be ready. But I'm going to tell you, if you don't want to, guess what? Y'all big, y'all big kids don't want to. And that's basically, listen, all through the Scripture we find that same thing. If you don't want to, you don't have to. God's already proven that His way's right and every other way's wrong. Like I said this morning, my favorite phrase, let me know how that works out. <laughs> that is my favorite phrase. Because I've tried it a lot of other ways. And it don't work. But I'm telling you what does work. I'm telling you, when you, when you fall on your knees before a holy God, and you ask Him to receive your life and to use it for His glory, something happens. Because that's what He's wanting all along. He's really just waiting for somebody that wanted to do it. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever... Oh, I praise God this morning. God does not discriminate. Do you know that? I'm a whosoever. Are you a whosoever? Yeah. Because He said, whosoever shall call on His name, believe on His name, they shall be saved. For they shall have eternal life. Listen, God's not going to make you do anything. Kids, excuse me, you, don't call them kids, right? I was a kid even after I was 27 years old. Mama said, kid, boy, listen, you, you may have to listen to your parents. And you know what? That's a good thing. But you know what God says? You make a choice of how you want it. See, you can, you can do what they say. And you go home and be all mad about it. Get all upset with them. Be, I mean, just be... You know how I'm talking about. Go in your room, shut the door, say everything you want to say you couldn't say in front of them, right? I know. I've been there. But that's not really what God wants. God wants you to have a heart to obey. See, when you have a heart to obey your parents, He knows it will mold you and fashion you to have a heart to obey your Heavenly Father. See, God's not going to make us do anything. And guess what? You can sneer and get mad at him all you want to. He knows all about it. But what he really wants, Jesus really wants us today, he wants us to quit sleeping and get ready. 
He wants us to live every day like it can be the last. When was the last time you lived that way? Instead of treading, enduring, or really frustratedly going through this day. We don't know which one is going to be the last, but here's what we do know. When it happens, it'll happen, and what we have done up to that point will be unchangeable. But today, you can change everything. Today, you still have the opportunity, while you have breath in your lungs, to change everything. You can change your destiny. You can change hey, your eternity. Because all you have to do is choose Him. Father, we thank you today. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that you've given us every second to this point. But we just thank you for your mercy. Father, this may be the day for someone to have their eyes open and be able to choose you for the first time. Father, this may be the day for someone who's been in a relationship for, for many, many years to have an opportunity today to choose your way. Wait. Father, this may be the day that as we choose you, you may say enough is enough. And you may take us home. But Lord, I pray for your people. Lord, I pray today for people that are going to make decisions even in this very moment where, Lord, you've already spoke to their heart. Lord, I pray they'll be obedient to you. Lord, even when they go out of here, there may be things that you spoke in their, about their life today that I have no clue about. Lord, I pray they'll be obedient. And I thank you, Lord, you're going to give them a choice. Father, we know it's definite you're coming. But Lord, I just pray today, awaken us, Lord. If we be asleep, shake us. Lord, if we be, miss, if we be just wasting the time, Lord, shake us. Lord, show yourself and your ways to your people. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Hey, maybe God has spoken something in your heart. I'm going to encourage you to be obedient. It may have nothing to do with in here, but be obedient. But during this, this time of this uh, altar call, we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. Hey, if you need Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, I encourage you, stand up. Walk down this aisle. Even if people look at you, Get on your face before Him and call unto His name. Christian, I'm going to challenge you today. I'm sure there's something in your life that God is speaking to you about this very hour. I'm going to challenge you today. I'm going to challenge you to submit to Him. I'm going to challenge you, hey, just like that person that needs salvation, I'm going to challenge you to walk that aisle. Put your face before a holy God. Call on His name. Don't be asleep. Be wide awake and be anticipating what the Lord's going to do. Will you stand with us, Brother Ron?
tell you one thing. I praise God. Hey, he says he'll take what's nasty and dark and he'll turn it white as snow. Man. I tell you, I just praise him today because he's the only one that can. And you know what? That's what he does with our stuff we take to him. I thank the Lord. Hey, we sang that song, The East is to the West. Oh, I praise him because when we bring it all to him, he washes the slate clean. And I'm going to tell you something. I praise him today.